Hello YouTube, this is Neon Tom for another Neon Tom e-bike ride. The day is January 20th when I recorded this and it is the day after a snowstorm or a blizzard and the roads are covered in snow and still not properly plowed. So just to give you an idea of what I was dealing with, you're going to see me slide out a little bit over here. Yeah. And that is kind of what happens if you're not going in a straight line and being very careful. So this is a two-way road, although it looks like this truck is taking up most of it. It's just because of the snow. Uh, a couple feet is shaved off either side of the road, so uh, not a lot of room. Anyways, I'm going to go up Dover Court in this video, starting at Queen Street. And we're going to head north. And I am heading towards Bloor to go to Long and McQuaid to buy some guitar strings. So that's Bloor Street right there. We turn right. We go to Long and McQuaid. And we are going to head back. And we're going to go back down Dover Court again. So right here I was just testing out the sidewalk because as you saw before I was kind of sliding all over the place. So I went on the sidewalk for a little bit because there wasn't anybody on there and I found that the salt actually helped me not slide out and it was a little bit better. But then as you saw a pedestrian was coming and I got back onto the road and I also stopped to let them pass because I really don't like when bicycles and e-bikes run me off the sidewalk so I try not to do that to other people. So right here I was going to stop and let this truck pass, but he actually slowed down for me and let me pass. So I'm going to speed this video up a bit. You can see we're doing times 400 right now and we're going to fast forward all the way up to Bloor so I can show you the Bloor bike lanes and we can get to the part where I buy the guitar strings and come back. I want to keep this video around 10 to 12 minutes. So I have the new GoPro 8 and it has a lot better shot stabilization than my previous cameras. And you can see that even when we're going times 400, the stabilization makes this footage actually watchable. Because if you look at some of my old videos before I had shot stabilization, when, it, when I do the fast forward, it's too bumpy to watch and it's just crazy. So anyways, we're back on the road, still heading north up to Long McQuay, and you can see a big apartment building there coming up on the horizon. That's basically up to it. So we're going to fast forward up until about there. And we're getting close now, so you can basically see it up ahead. You can see I'm going over some snow here again, sliding out a little bit. And uh, before I started shooting this video, I actually did have a small crash, and I really wish that I had it on video because I could probably just upload that 10 second crash and get more hits than I have on my entire channel. But I was not recording at that time. And after crashing once, I kind of figured out how to stay up and not crash again. And basically when you see me sliding out, my feet are usually not on the pedals anymore. And if I slide a little bit too much, I have to kind of use my feet to keep my balance. And I find that works pretty well. So this is a Bloor bike lane. And uh, I, have fat tire, I have fat tires on, which have like really good tread and they're really big and usually I can get over stuff. Oh, and that's a stick I have to avoid. It kind of knocked my handlebar a tiny bit, but yeah, if you, we're going at speed and you didn't notice and you hit that thing, it would probably wake you up. So as you can see, the snow plow has kind of created little barriers for me entering into this bike lane. And when I finally get into it, it is still just barely rideable. And uh, I finally get into kind of a tire track here and I finally get some speed. But at the point that I get speed, I'm already at long way, so I already have to get off. And I kind of stop here and I realize you can see that place to lock your bike up but it's completely buried with snow so uh, kind of looking around trying to figure out what to do and I actually just sort of go forward and I saw that those little leaves there that's actually another place to lock up your bike and it was dug out of it so I kind of throw my bike up over the snow pile 
and I climb up over it and I lock up my bike on the other side. And again, we're gonna go at 400 speed here because locking up my bike isn't that interesting. But uh, I have that orange carrier bag on me. I pull my bike lock out and uh, I just lock it up here. And I have like the second strongest kryptonite bike lock for my bike. You can see right there. Anyways, I lock it up and I go into Long McQuaid and uh, I'm putting on a mask right there under my helmet. Even though it's kind of hard to see my face, I've still uh, put my mask on properly and I go in. And we're gonna go back to normal speed now. You can see me walking in there on the camera and all the beautiful guitars. And the ones right behind the counter there are the most expensive. And the guitar strings are right there, right in the front of the store, so I didn't have to go too far. Those are my options, those are the guitar strings. I uh, took a look at the other side, and it was just bass strings, so went back to this side, uh, did some considerations on which strings I wanted, and I ended up getting these guys, the Ernie Ball Paradigm strings. And the reason that I shelled out a little bit more money than normal for guitar strings is because the strings that I have had some rust on them, and uh, I didn't break them, but they just weren't, they didn't feel good to play anymore, and they were like really rusty and gross, and they made my hands look gross after I played them. So uh, got some new strings, they sound great, and they have a coating on them that makes them resistant to corrosion. So there's a nice gentleman who helped me out at Long McQuaid, and we bought the strings, and I'm gonna have And I make sure all my gear is done up and uh, mask off and head out. So I unlock my bike here and at this point I wasn't planning on taking Dover Court back. I was thinking I was going to take another road and uh, you can see over here we're back at normal speed and I pull out and I was going to go in the bike lane but it was actually just too full of snow so I go beside the bike lane and there was a road here on the right and I was thinking maybe I will take that all the way back home. But when I looked down, it was worse than even the bike lane. It was just absolutely nuts. So I decided I didn't want to hurt myself and I saw a car coming down that road as well. So I turned around on that idea. And then I thought, okay, maybe I will go back to Dufferin, which is a main road. Uh, Dover Court is kind of a smaller road. So maybe the main road will be better for me. So I'm just crossing the street over here to get to the north side and start going west. So I'm on the road right now thinking to myself that the bike lane is treacherous and I'm doing pretty good out here. And I see this guy also biking out here so he's got the same idea as me. I think maybe somewhere around this point I probably spy a car behind me in my mirror. And I think we'll probably hold him up. And this guy decides that he's going to be able to try the bike lane, so I do the same thing and I come in with him. And he immediately starts losing speed and he starts walking his bike. And I figured I could do the same or I could bail on this situation. So I chose the latter, and I turned my bike around and I got out of this bike lane. I go back to the intersection and we're back at Dover Court here. So I decide not to try my luck on new roads and to just go back on Dover Court. So now we're gonna go north and generally in the city or sorry, now we're going south, and generally in the city when you're going south, you're going towards the lake and you're going downhill. So this ride was a little bit faster, a little bit funner, but also very dangerous. And this is the part where I kind of slid out on the way up, so I was kind of careful around here. I had my legs out, suspecting that I might wipe out or slide around, but everything was pretty good, and the rest of this cruise went pretty well. I'm just going to speed up and we're going to get ourselves back to King Street. And you can see 
over here. I stop at this intersection. And uh, I think at this point I started seeing uh, a couple more cars around me. Somewhere over here I start catching uh, glimpses of cars like pulling up behind me. And I had a car in front of me. And that guy beside me. And uh, I believe what happens over here is that I kind of mentioned earlier that there was only like room for one car. It's not supposed to like you can see there's two ca cars going by. It's supposed to be a two-lane road. But I follow this guy for a while and we run into an issue. Oh, and he was spraying me with slush as well. So I decided let's try my luck on the sidewalk one more time. And the sidewalk here was treacherous. It was not salted. It was really slippery and there were garbage cans out and I had to kind of, you know, you, you can see what I'm doing. I'm swerving like left and right in between snow piles. And I was actually having a really good time. I thought that was fun. And then this guy came in front of me and I was going slowly and my brakes worked well, so I took, there was no danger there. I was not going to hit him, but it, that kind of made me realize that uh, I really have to take it slow if I'm going to be traveling here. But that did not last long. The next sidewalk I couldn't get to or I'd have to go through that little hole in front of the car. And if I did that, I would definitely scratch the car with my bike. So it was back to the road with me. And as soon as I go back to the road, you can see I slid out again immediately. But, uh, Stuck to my guns and head out. And this is... I was mentioning earlier. It was supposed to be a two-way road here, but... Basically, two cars couldn't fit through that intersection. And somebody had to kind of reverse to let the other guy out. And there were like... Three cars one way, three cars the other guy way. Everybody was on a standoff here. And finally... Everybody got through. And I followed this guy back down towards me. Over on the left here, there's a pretty good pizza place that I like. Can't remember exactly what intersection this is. Uh, Dover Court and something. Just uh, south of Dundas, I think. And, uh, trying my luck on the sidewalk one more time. And I do pass these cars. I figured that the cars were probably getting stuck again, so that's why I wanted to go by them on the sidewalk. And I was having a good time, but I see a pedestrian, so I get back on the road. And I almost slide out again. You can see a pattern emerging where basically any time I try to do like a full 90 degree turn in this slush, I slide out. And luckily I use my legs to catch myself or else I'd fully wipe out. And you can see Queen Street coming up just ahead. That building, uh, the tallest one you can see there on the left is the Great Hall. Right there, that white building on the left is Bar Poet. This green building on the right is a cannabis dispensary. And we've got the Rexall. This is Queen and Dover Court. And we're getting pretty close to home for me. So I end up turning the video off uh, somewhere around here. And that's the police passing me. And I don't know what they're doing over there in the snow, but I'm sure they were investigating some sort of snow caused calamity, as everybody was experiencing on this day. Anyways, that is everything for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I've been Neon Tom. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It motivates me to make more and make more quality content for you. Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe out there. Bye.